So there's a in, in the examples that are in the files um, on Canvas, there, example number seven. Example number seven is an implicit solution to a heterogeneous reservoir with variable grid size and variable permeability. Okay? So <coughs> this is just a four grid block system, and you know, all the solutions to every, you know, every boundary, every uh, permeable boundary are there, and all of this, right? So then all the T, the B, the P, the Q. And then the solution over um, three days, the comparison between the implicit method and CMG are all here, and you can see it compares well. Right? So I thought it would be fun, since I asked you guys to code, maybe I should code this. I'll just live code it right here in front of you and see how good a programmer I am. You think I can get it done in the time allotted in class? Huh? I bet if I didn't talk to you guys and I just concentrated, <laughs> I, I could get it done in about five minutes, okay? But I, I think it's useful to do some live coding s sometimes because, you know, I, I mean, not to brag, but I'm a pretty good programmer. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I did it professionally for like seven years before I was a professor. Essentially, I, I wrote scientific high-performance computing codes, and uh, and I know lots of languages and lots of different programming styles and other things. So, uh, I think it might be useful if I live code it and I just sort of tell you what I'm thinking about as I'm going uh, through. Now, this is a very simple problem, so there's not really much to think about. But anyway, <laughs> okay. Let me see if I can blow this uh, thing up. So example seven, um, um, can you guys see that? Can you see it? So, so all that is, is um, and I'll try to go back and forth uh, between exa example seven, but so, so, what? Make it a little larger. Okay, let's see. Um, by the way, uh, I'm using this sort of special program called Jupyter, which allows me to write stuff in, the no in this notebook form. Um, but the code I'm writing is just MATLAB. The language is MATLAB. So I thought it'd be easier to see this because you can, you can see the inputs and outputs very clearly from each step. I thought it would be easier to look at this way than doing it in the MATLAB command window. But you could absolutely do everything I'm about to do right from the MATLAB command window. Okay? I just thought this would be easy. I mean, and you can clearly, you know, I'm running MATLAB. Right? So it just, this is just a different interface to MATLAB. Okay? Okay, so the inputs to the problem, the, the porosity is 0.2, the entire length of the reservoir is 10,000 feet, the area of the reservoir is constant, okay, so it's uh, got a constant 200,000 cubic feet. Viscosity one center poise, uh, we're talking, the fluid is water, so the, the, the um, formation volume factor is one. The compressibility is uh, one times 10 to the minus sixth. On the left-hand boundary, we have a constant pressure, 2,000 PSI. There's a initial pressure in the reservoir everywhere of 1,000 PSI, and then each grid block has its own permeability. So the first grid block is 10 millidarcy, then 100 millidarcy, then 50 millidarcy, then 20 millidarcy, and then on the right side, no flow. And then each grid block also has, even though it's drawn fairly consistently, each grid block also has its own delta X. So 2,000 feet, 3,000 feet, 1,500 feet, 3,500 feet. Okay? So, what I, 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 only thing I've coded there is just the inputs, just what I read off, okay? The only sort of special thing is that my delta x I put in a vector, okay? So the, the first grid block has 2,000 feet, second grid block 3,000 feet, third grid block 1,500 feet, fourth grid block 3,500 feet. Same thing for the permeability, 10, 100, 50, 20. 
Okay, so those are vectors. All right, and my initial pressure, 1,000, and the left-hand boundary pressure, 2,000. All right, so the first thing I want to do is compute the inner grid block. Okay, so I'm going to call it K inner block. And, you know, when I code, when I code, I, I mean, there's no restrictions in MATLAB or any language nowadays as to how long your variables could be. So do yourself a favor and make your variables painfully explicit. I mean, we've got in this production code that I write, we've got, and this is in C++, we got variables that have 100 characters in them. They're like sentences. Because what we, do, what we don't want to do is we don't want to write a lot of comments that explain the code when the code's very clear if you just know what the variables are. Right? So, so do yourself a favor and use variable names that are very clear. You, know, there's no, you don't have to just make it like K-I-N-T or something cryptic. You know? All right. So I'm going to compute all the inner grid block um, all the inner grid block uh, permeabilities at once using the vectorized notation in MATLAB, right? So remember the equation is it's delta x at i minus delta x at i plus 1. I'm sorry, plus, plus delta x at i plus 1 to the x. All right, so this is not the inner grid block permeability. It's just, this is the, I'm just, that's just the adding the two delta x's together, right? The first and the second one, the second and the third one, and the third and the fourth, right? I'm just doing it in a vectorized way, so I get everything at once. So, so this is going to be, you know, there's four grid blocks, but there's three interfaces, right? So the first sanity check is I got three answers, right? Three outputs. Four grid blocks, three interfaces where I'm computing the permeability. Right? Now I want to do I want to do a vectorized divide, so I'm going to do dot divide. And I have delta delta x one to the n minus one. dot divide the permeability 1 to the n minus 1 maybe I should uh, I'm going to run off the screen here I should do maybe this so that's delta x over that's delta x i over k i right plus delta x okay do I have enough Okay, so those are my inner block permeabilities. Now let's check it with the answer. 21.74, 21 75, 24.39. All right. Okay. So then, so now we have the inner block permeability. Um, the inner block. So these are like those ti at 3 halves, ti at 5 halves, those terms, ti at 7 halves. So the, trans the inner block transmissibility, uh, 2 times k inner block times a dot divide mu times bw times Delta X Q 
Okay. So I don't know if there, I don't think he computed. Oh, yeah, he did. So 1739, 666.7, 1951. Still looking good? Okay. So now we have to make, uh, we have to make our um, uh, T matrix, right? So those, those are just those, the terms we just computed are just those inner block transmissibility, so three halves, five halves, all that. So now we have to make our matrix. So our matrix T, well, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, compute what T1 is, so that's that boundary term. And so we, we said that T1 is... Well, this is not, I mean, this is just T1. This is what the transmissibility evaluated over the whole T1. Right? So not at the half time step. That's T1. We'll use that in the construction of our um, transmissibility matrix. And I think that should be 1,000. Why is it not 1,000? Yes. There we go. Okay. So, so then our T matrix, okay, is going to be, and I'm, I'm going to construct the diagonal first, okay. So I'm going to use MATLAB's diagonal command, and I'm going to say T inner block 1 plus 2 times T1, right. So that's the first diagonal term. And then I'm going to use the vectorized notation to fill in the next few. So 1 to the n minus 1 plus t inner block 2 to the n and t inner block n. So, just if you're not clear on what I did there, right? So the t, the t to the one half term became two t one because of the boundary condition, and then I have t at three halves. So that remember I computed the trans, the inner block transmissibilities, and I got three terms there. The first term was t to the three half. The second term was t to the 5 half, the last term was t to the 7 halves, right? So I, I put I, I, 2t1, which is the boundary condition, plus t to the 3 halves, and then I just performed these vectorized operations for the rest of the way. Okay? And... Let me see here. So I think he has the he has the answer. So the first term on the diagonal should be what thirty one seven three nine. No, th three thousand seven thirty nine. Okay, so that's right. Then six 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 seven plus seventeen thirty nine eighty four. So that, that looks right. The last term is nineteen five twelve, right? Five two nineteen five two. So yeah, okay. So I think we're we're good enough, close enough. Um, okay. So but that's just the diagonal. Now now I need the I need the terms. It's a tri-diagonal matrix, right? So I just got the diagonal. Now I want the 
the diagonal plus one and the diagonal minus one, right? And I can use MATLAB's diagonal commands uh, to give me that. So I'm just going to add uh, dot, dot, dot. And I'm just going to say diag um, diagonal minus two and block one plus diag minus two and block minus one. So those commands, the diag something comma one, so diag takes a vector, right? And if you don't give it a second argument, it puts it on the diagonal. If you give it a second argument, in this case one, it means one above the diagonal. Right? So if I had gave it two, it would have been two above the diagonal. And if I gave it minus one, that's one below the diagonal. Right, so, so then this is my tridiagonal matrix, and it looks right, you know, 1739, 6667 on the off diagonal portions, right? Everything looks right with the answer. I do have this little scale factor out there to convert it because this is Millie Darcy feet per center poise, and I want to compute it into feet cubed per day PSI, so I have this. 6.33 e to the minus 3. So I'll just tack that onto the end. Just surround the whole thing in parentheses and tack it on here. 6.33 e to the minus 3. Okay. Um. Let's see. So then B is pretty easy. B is just a diagonal matrix, so I'm just going to use the diag command again. Um, it, it's just A times delta X times B times CT over DW. Okay, looks right. 80, 120, 60, 140, looks right. All right. So then P0 is, I'm just going to use the ones command. So ones makes a vector uh, that's four by one. And I'm going to multiply that by the initial pressure. So there's my P0, all thousand. And then Q, I'm going to initialize with four zeros. Um, and then I'm going to set the first value of Q to 2 times PB times T1 times my scale factor. And that's due, that's due to the fact that, uh, that's due to the fact that there's a boundary condition on the left-hand side. Yeah, I don't know what if you just put four. What, I think it's column vector. Oh, it's a four by four matrix? Okay. I actually don't use MATLAB that much, so I'm kind of rusty. Uh, if, to do this type of scripting, I usually prefer Python, but anyway. Um, so uh, we'll, u we'll use a delta T of one day. And our P at N is equal to P0, right? So the, the first time through the loop. We're going to run it for three days. So for I equals 1 to 3, um, I'm going to make a matrix A. And so we're using the implicit method. So A is T plus B over delta T. OK, so that's the left-hand side. We're using the implicit method. The right-hand side is B over delta T times PN plus Q. And then PN plus 1 is equal to A backslash B. So I'm just solving the linear system. And then finally, I'm going to set PN plus 1 to PN and end the loop.
Oops. I must have deleted the wrong. Pn equals Pn plus 1. Okay, so this is the first day. 1123, 1123, 1103, 1003.3. First day is correct. Second day, 1219.4. Okay. You believe me, they're all right. Okay. So, implicit, implicit. I'm so, this is a this this a backslash b is a linear solve, right? So I'm solving. It's like doing the inverse of a times b. Right? So, um, so what happens if we run it to like 300 days? Hmm? Well, the first thing it's going to do is print out 300 time steps, and I don't want that. So I'm going to get rid of that thing, and I'm going to say, if i equals 300, display pn plus 1, uh, end. Um, what's wrong with my if statement? Eh, I know what I'll do. Forget the if statement. You don't need that. It's for loop. You should never use while loops, actually. While loops are going to get you in trouble. Uh, because you're, you're gonna, if, you, if you miss a condition to break out of the while loop, you're going to go into an infinite loop. So you should always use a for loop and then break out of the for loop. If you, even if you want to br have a breakout condition, set your for loop to some maximum value. So say, even if you expect that you're going to break out in 10 iterations, you can set your for loop to run for 100, and then you can have an if statement that breaks out of it. That's what you should do. That way, if you get to 100, you won't get stuck in an infinite loop, right, if you never meet your exit criteria. So if you use a for loop with a breakout condition, you'll always end the loop, right? You won't get stuck in an infinite loop. Um, all, but for this one, all I have to do, I can run it for 300 steps, and then I can just look at what the last one is, right? Okay. Would everybody give me the leeway to say that that's pretty darn close to 2,000? Okay. If I ran it longer, it would get there, right? So, you know, let's run it for um, 700, maybe. Okay, there we go. 2,000. So, there, at infinity, everything is 2,000 PSI. Right. And that's because that's the input pressure and there's no flow. Right? So if you, if you continue to pressurize at 2,000 PSI, eventually it's going to equilibrate. Right? Okay. Um, so I had fun. Guess what? Your homework asks you to work. Your homework, if you can see it, I don't know which is not due for another two weeks. You have plenty of time to work on it. But your homework basically asks you to work by hand an identical problem, at least by hand up to the point uh, where you have T, B, and Q. But then once you have T, B, and Q, put it in a MATLAB code and solve it. Well, if it was me and I'm already going to use MATLAB, I'm going to make sure my calculations are right for T, B, and Q. So you can write the entire code that I just wrote, basically. Uh, now, for the first two problems, you should do it by hand to get full credit. But you, at least you'll know you have the right answers. Your hand calculations should work out to what MATLAB is going to give you. And then, then the last problem is there. All right?